my name is Cami, and today I'm going to be running through a brief tutorial on how to use CocoaPods in your Xcode slash Swift project. Now for y'all who don't know, CocoaPods is pretty much what allows you to use other people's libraries, sometimes if you see them on GitHub, in your own Swift project. I pretty much call them the plugins for Xcode that just make life easier. So today, just to run through a brief example on how to install CocoaPods and how to use it in your project, we're going to use something simple. Chart for Swift. Now this is pretty much just a really helpful CocoaPods idea created by those you see on the screen. You can scroll down and see the beautiful charts that they've already created, which just would make our project so much easier instead of creating this all from scratch. And that's why it's a great example to get started. And so that's why today I'm just going to be running through briefly how you can add this to your project and then just a brief example of how you can actually use the CocoaPod. So first off, we're going to go back to the main page and it's super critical that you actually install CocoaPods through Terminal. So as you see, I have my Terminal open and all we're going to do is copy this command and paste it into Terminal. Now I've already done this command since I've used CocoaPods in the past and so I won't be able to showcase that. Once you have CocoaPods installed, we're going to create our own Xcode project. When creating the Xcode project, none of the settings truly matter. As long as the language is Swift or Objective-C, CocoaPods should work the same. Now, personally, I'm going to be using Storyboards, UI, Kit, App Delegate, and Swift. So we're going to go ahead and create the project. And it's actually very important to know where you have it saved. In this tutorial, I'm going to have the project saved onto my desktop just to make it easier to actually navigate to through Terminal as we will do later. So with that, let's go ahead and create the project. Now, once your project is created, you can go ahead and add all of the bare necessities that you'd like to and pretty much do whatever you like in the project up until the point where you actually need the CocoaPod that you were going to install. And at that point, we're going to head and close out of Xcode altogether, completely quit the application, and we're going to open up Terminal. We're going to need to navigate to our project in order to install CocoaPods for that specific project. In this case, we're going to use the change directory command, or cd, and since you can see charts testing on my desktop, we're going to cd into desktop, and then we're going to change directory one more time into the specific folder. If you start typing it, if you click tab, you can actually have it autofill for you. Now at this point, we should be inside of the folder, and if we actually list what's in there, we can see we have our Xcode project right here. From this point, we're going to run one key command, and that is pod init. This is going to set up something called a pod file within your project, or if you open it up, you'll see that you have this new file that we didn't have listed in the terminal beforehand. However, you can't actually edit it quite this way. If you double click, it'll open up in, as you can see, text edit. However, text edit isn't the most efficient when it comes to coding, and some of the keys actually are slightly different, and so it can be a little problematic, which is why I'm actually going to recommend Xing out of this, quitting the text edit, and going back to our terminal, and we're going to open up this file using the command line in Xcode. To do that, we're going to click open, dash A for application, Xcode with a capital X and lowercase letters, and then we're going to type pod file. Running this command will actually open it up in a way that we're able to edit it using code. From this point, all you have to do is navigate to the specific copod co that you'd like to install. Since I mentioned that we're going to be using charts, we're going to head and navigate to that. And as we can see, it's truly just slash charts. Its name is charts. So we're going to go ahead and, and minimize this. And all you have to do in order to install your CocoaPod, and this works for any of them, with a few exceptions, is type pod and then an apostrophe. And we're going to simply type in charts. Now, if you use a different file or a different CocoaPod, you're going to have a different name, and that correlates simply to its exact name, as you can see. From that point, we're going to go ahead and save the file, exit out completely, and we're going to run in terminal pod install. Now, this does exactly what you would imagine. It just installs the CocoaPod, all of its dependencies, and it should be green. You might have a couple warnings, but typically those are okay. If you want to make sure it all worked, you can also run pod update to make sure that all of the files are up to date. As you can see, we didn't have any red, and so it should be all set. So if we go ahead and exit out, once we exit, we're going to want to navigate to our projects folder instead of going directly through Xcode. Once we open it, 
you're gonna actually see something new. It's gonna be .xc workspace. And from this point forward, this is going to be the project that we open every time we go to change our project. If we open just the Xcode project, something about the CocoaPods just doesn't work quite right. And so we're gonna work in the workspace in order to have, any, have everything run correctly. And from that point, you're gonna see on the navigation panel, all of your pods installed here, and you can go ahead and check them out, but they're already all installed for you. But in order to just get to your project, you're gonna go through this first dropdown, and you see your main server board and all of the things that would typically show up in an Xcode project. The only exception is now, when you go to your view controller or any Swift file, just like UI kit, you can also import charts. Now, once you've done this, you've already successfully set up your CocoaPod. However, it might not run for just a little bit as Xcode is trying to figure out what is this new thing that's been added. And so what I recommend is doing Command-B, as I've previously done, for command build, just to have your project run through all of the new files, and from that point, it hopefully should recognize something is new, that you've implemented a new library. And as you can see, that little error here with the charts went away. If that doesn't work, you can also go to Project, and you can do Clean Build Folder, which pretty much does the same exact thing, just a little bit more intensely. And if all else fails, sometimes just restarting Xcode is a great way to get your project to recognize it. Now in this case, let's just go ahead and quickly see how we can make charts run in our project. Thank you. 